Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, the first edition of the Scottish side of the podcast, which is a WrestleMania special. You have myself, Craig. You have my trusty co-host, Aaron. How are you, Aaron? I'm very well, thank you, bud. Just had a lazy day today doing nothing. Okay, for some. I've also got two other people with us this time. Not one, but two. We have John. How are you, John? Ah, not bad. I had a busy day at work, so came home, had a wee sleep, and then uh, jumped on. See? I have these part timers that do nothing else. I've been working hard. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see in the corner, we have the one and the only Angus Mad Dog. How are you, Mad Dog? Yeah, great to see you guys. Nice to nice to join the Scottish contingent. Obviously, the surname Angus lends itself to that. So, uh, <laughs> the Mad Dog is in uh, Liverpool this evening at Fusion Nightclub. We are at a boxing event tonight, and the uh, the staff here have kindly let me dive in the office to record this because it's a bit noisy downstairs. But uh, Jay Apter from TNT, his son is fighting in a boxing show tonight. So some of the uh, people from around the world of wrestling are all here this evening to support Jay's son. Uh, we've got infamous uh, promotions are in the house, over the top wrestling. Uh, I believe I saw Lucy Sky from uh, TNT, who's the TNT Ignition Women's Champion here. Uh, Lee McAteer from Progress is here. And of course, myself all supporting uh, the uh, the gang from TNT tonight. So exciting times, but uh, I didn't want to miss this because, you know, it's we're on the road to WrestleMania now. I'm looking forward to being in Philadelphia. And obviously, you guys have got some great WrestleMania stories to tell us. So looking forward to hearing what your favourite manias are. As usual, we've always got stories. <laughs> so I'm going to kick us off tonight. So this one, with it being a Mania special, we'll talk about our favourite manias or any manias we have been to uh, and then we're going to obviously co- talk about the mania coming up so for myself I'm going to talk about the mania I was actually at live and that was Wrestlemania 38 in Dallas Texas now that was my first ever WWE show as well i had also been to some indie promotions um, but my first ever WWE show I went big you go big or you go home so I went big. So I went to WrestleMania. Me and my girlfriend went to WrestleMania. Uh, we were we went with it was what was the name of the company before Wrestle Tours? Wrestling Wrestle Travel. Travel. Oh, we went with Wrestling Travel. Um, I can't fault the guys. They were amazing. Um, we got the flight over, met them at the airport, got the travel back, um, and then we got we were at the hotel. We had the pre-show party on the we had the party on the wee Thursday. We get there when uh, we make it here showed up and let us know who he was and brought in a couple of wrestlers to, to give us a wee story. Um, we then, me and my girlfriend went to the the shop uh, at night. Um, unbeknown to us, we went in, we were looking about and we were both like, why is there people crammed in the ring? Like There was loads of people at the ringside and barriers all the way up. And then next minute, this boy walks past who's con- who was the head of the and he just went, cue Michael Cole, cue Michael Cole music, go. And next minute, here's Michael Cole coming out to his music. And I'm like, what's going on? So I had Michael Cole, Rikishi, Kane, Godfather, Triple H made his first ever appearance after his heart scares. Um, Shawn Michaels was there. There's a tag team that I don't even know who they were because it's... Um, not that old to tell. And then next minute, here comes Michelle McCool with the kids. And then next minute, Undertaker comes out. I mean, right, right. The unrevealed Undertaker statue. So getting to actually see that, I was like, amazing. And I was also that close to a selfie with Undertaker. Just if he heard us. <laughs> so that'll be, if I ever get to meet him, that will be getting brought up to him. Nice. So, uh, we went then cut. We went and done our own thing on the Friday and stuff like that. And then on the Saturday we came to the the pre-show party that we were at with the guys. Uh, Shane Taylor was there, so we got my photo with Shane Taylor. Uh, met amazing people that I've actually still friends with to the day that I met on the first day getting there in the airport. Uh, went to WrestleMania, got to the stadium, the doors aren't even opened yet. I was that keen. <laughs> so we're standing outside where everyone's making noise, doing woos or whatever. Doors open, everyone starts piling in. I'm like, right, let's go. Got in and just seen the stage and just went, wow. 
just <laughs> that that just to see it live and for the first time you're just like wow it was, I was so in awe got to my seat had a great view from my seat uh, was sat with the wrestle tour guys um, well wrestle travel at the time but I'm just going to call them wrestle tours because that's what they're called yeah, now that's what we are now yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> so everyone sat together uh, we watched night one and then we were back at the hotel got up you could have went to the tailgate party is what they were called not a pre-show party a tailgate party we, could have went to, we never went to that on uh, bless you <laughs> we never went to that on the Sunday um, where we went to a couple of shops and then got the bus to the stadium uh, and then had night two there absolutely amazing again got to see on night one got to see Stone Cold wrestle for possibly the last time so it was, that was amazing um, got to see Cody Rhodes return live uh, and then the Sunday we've got to see Roman Reigns beat Brock Lesnar and just the shows were amazing then went to Raw on the Monday night I had a really good view for that noticed myself on TV a few times for Raw on the Monday night <laughs> nice. um, all the reason I noticed is because I could see myself with my phone out for recording the stuff as you normally do I had went to Raw on the Monday night loved that I went back to the hotel chilled and then we were leaving on the Tuesday to go back home overnight on the Tuesday into the Wednesday. So just instead of watching it on TV where I probably would have watched half of it and then because it's so late at night here in the UK, I would have fell asleep probably because that's what I tend to do when I watch shows. Um, unless I watched Likewise. it with Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're all the, same. the only one that probably wouldn't fall asleep would be John. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> probably. See? Um... So seeing it at a decent time in America was it was good and just being there I like, I can't fault being there. I then went me and Aaron uh, then went to Clash at the Castle later in the year, um, so that was like had that. So but being at WrestleMania for like your first one like if you ever go you will really really enjoy it and you will mm. like I can't prom- I can't give the guys at Wrestle Tours uh, enough credit for everything they've done. They didn't get all the all part of the package when I went because there was a WWE side didn't c- fulfil that. So because we didn't get what we should have got, we got money back, which helped pay for like going to Raw and getting maybe more and getting more merch and that. So I can't fault the guys for all their their work and support that they've done. I still keep up to date with everything they do. I'm hoping that I start saving up and go again in a couple of years with them. Um, and so we'll see what happens. But that's that's my part of the story, and I just can't say enough of the wrestle tour guys and just being there live. It's unbelievable. Nice. Sounds like We're an gonna... amazing time. Good one. Good one to pick as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 100%. It was. And it's even better when your favourite wrestler comes back. So you kind of felt. Yeah, that. mate. I, I do remember <laughs> chatting about that and stuff, which is phenomenal. Yeah. That was class. Yep. So, the story next is going to go to John. Your best mania. Uh, well, I've just I've just finished watching WrestleMania 13. Oh, nice. Because uh, what I do is, when it comes to WrestleMania, I normally pick a few WrestleManias to watch on the build-up to WrestleMania. Nice. So, uh, I'll, but I would say my favourite WrestleMania has got to be WrestleMania 20, when Undertaker returned. Nice. 20 was, was a solid show. I enjoyed I 20. Yeah, 100%. I know it doesn't get spoken about because of who's in the main event, but that moment that moment in the ring with them two was incredible as well. Yeah, 100%. Some very special moments on that show. Even right yeah. from the very start, it was, a, it was a real sort of changing of the guard moment, you know, and uh, yeah, I thought that was a, a, definitely a great show. So is that your favourite one, WrestleMania 20? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And what have you been to, John? Have you been to some shows yourself? Uh, I was at um, SmackDown and Money in the Bank. Nice. Class. Because uh, I actually met Lee McAteer at um, Slug and Lettuce just, at the, uh, just after, <laughs> um, after the show. Brilliant. He is here this evening. He just said to me a moment ago, um, did, did I want him to dive on and come and say hello to you? But because I'm up in the office and he's watching the boxing downstairs... I said to him, you enjoy the boxing, mate. I think he's had a very busy day. I think he finished work about 10 minutes before we came to the boxing, and he's he's got calls to make all night and stuff. He's a very busy man, but, uh, yeah, 
I'll see. He's not. You can't see him on the CCTV. Otherwise, I'll show you where he was. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he's just supporting the guys in the box in this evening. So, um, but yeah. So that was uh, Money in the Bank and SmackDown was brilliant. That was one of the highest grossing uh, WWE shows that they've they've ever done. So that's uh, brilliant for the UK and obviously that uh, you know AEW running Wembley as well last year and, and Clash of the Castle just showed that uh, you know the UK is one of the best. Uh, Basis for WWE to come on and uh, also AEW to do shows because we've got such a passionate fan base over here that it's uh, you know it really is a, a great place and the wrestlers love to come here and perform because as you know our crowds are uh, pretty raucous and uh, noisy that's why WrestleMania is always so good because uh, so many of the UK can go over and uh, make it noisy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, therefore. But you also get a lot of the wrestlers that if you speak to them, they'll say they love coming to the UK. The UK, yeah. the UK crowd is one of the best crowds to have. But like you even see that when we've been at FTO, Mad Dog, you see you, they get asked that if they're doing an interview in the ring and they're like, love coming to the UK. So even you see that with the wrestlers themselves. So Yeah, there were a few of the love of wrestling this time who were just, uh, you know, it was a real treat to meet them and they were on to absolutely top form. You know, Al Snow was great. And he's uh, hosting a hooked on wrestling party at this year's Mania on the uh, on the just before Monday Night Raw. So after mm-hmm. Mania, but before Monday Night Raw, he's doing the uh, the party, which will be in association with Wrestle Tours, which should be amazing. And uh, it, you know who I really enjoyed meeting who I'd not met before was Mark Merrow. What an absolute positive guy Mark Merrow is. He was just like the absolute power of positivity and some of the stories he was telling about how he's uh, helping children in america and stuff and he's just a uh, you know inspirational character really great to meet him but uh, john what was your favorite match then at, at wrestlemania 20 apart from the main uh, events obviously um if i can remember correctly the tag team turmoil oh nice nice yeah, give you that. And then, give and then obviously the, the handicap match where um, Evolution and uh, Mick Foley Rock and the Rock, sucked, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, there's a few crackers on that show. Was, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. That's uh, one I've got on. I think I've got them all on DVD up until about thirty, and uh, that that's one of the ones that I go back and watch it. Watch a bit. That uh, the thing we did with the Kane and Undertaker with that was brilliant when Undertaker first came back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was uh, it's really nice. good. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, who was in the tag team turmoil? Uh, I th- if I'm remembering correctly, I think it was the Dudleys. Um, I think the greatest tag. I think it was the great, one of those greatest tag team. I can't remember all the all the tag team turmoil teams, but there were some good ones. But it was a cracker, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to go back and watch that one this evening. You see anything like that that I get reminded of? If that's someone's favourite, I'll <laughs> check it out and then I'll give you a review on it this week. <laughs> nice. You want me to what about it? yourself? What was what's your WrestleMania story? My well, I've never been. Obviously, I like John, but um, my favorite WrestleMania. It's currently just flashed up because I've got this is awesome on uh, just now is um, on the WWE Network, um, and my one is WrestleMania 17. Uh, just the good feel factor, the way the show was put together. But um, my match for that was the feud between The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Just how they built it and the way that it came together, and you could see uh, things of that with The Rock just now, like what he's doing. Like it, it reminds me of what he did back then, what kind of what he's doing just now um, on the programming. And only other show I've been to is obviously Clash at the Castle, and that to be uh, as Craig said, a uh, show like that live and experience it. And as you said about <clears throat> the UK crowd, like. I got goosebumps, and uh, I'm sure Craig was the same. Like when Edge came out and his theme hit, and the whole place erupted and was singing his song. It was just phenomenal. Same with Drew. Yes, a hundred percent. And uh, also, it was very interesting at the end. That was very different what they did with Tyson Fury. I yes. wasn't expecting to be singing uh, American Pie that evening, but there you have it. Yep. Different things happen at wrestling. You never know what surprises you're going to get, do you? <laughs> No, no. That, was actually, that was actually shown on the network them actually singing American Pie yeah, yeah. amazing it was, was nice to see uh, Bret Hart I thought uh, Bret Hitman Hart mm-hmm. 
there yep. in uh, Cardiff. That was special. To see the reaction he got was, uh, you know, the respect shown, you know, to Brett the Hitman Hart there was just well-deserved. And it was just nice to see that it was, you know, still acknowledged even now that he's just the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. It's just uh, absolutely brilliant to see that. And I know he had a great time that weekend, which was pretty special as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Right, let's roll on to you, my dog. What yeah, are your oh, stories? Well, you know, I've had, I've, had, I've been to a few WrestleManias. So uh, my first one I went to was in uh, 2007 after I uh, graduated from university. I treated myself to WrestleMania and uh, went to uh, WrestleMania 23 in Detroit, which was a, a pretty epic. Uh, you know, I felt like that was sort of like one of the very last sort of classic WrestleManias, I would say. There was like the Ruthless Aggression era, at, you know, was happening at that time still, but there was uh, like, you know, Cena was coming through, Batista was coming through, but you still had guys like Taker on the card, Shawn Michaels was still on the card, so it was a really good, uh, you know, representation of both sort of the, the you know, the you know the uh, Attitude Era, but still like the Ruthless Aggression Era as well. So that was a really special show, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and then... Um, People sort of said about Detroit, you don't want to go to Detroit or whatever, but I had an amazing time in Detroit. I went to the uh, Henry Ford Museum, uh, stayed in a really nice hotel, and Marriott's right in the in the centre, which is in like the, uh, the the building that you always see on the adverts whenever they show Detroit. We were actually staying there, so that's pretty cool. And uh, I just had a great time. And uh, one of the highlights for me at that one was uh, the Hall of Fame. Uh, Mr. Perfect got inducted into the Hall of Fame at that one. Uh, and randomly, one of the funniest things that happened at that one was uh, Rob Van Dam uh, after the Hall of Fame was getting put on the coach. And uh, Pat Patterson's like, get on the coach, Rob. And uh, Rob's in his hometown of Detroit. So the whole streets are just going wild, RVD chance. And uh, Rob just uh, dived into the crowd and got crowd surfed up, up the street. And I was just standing there watching Pat Patterson's reaction to that, and it was uh, it was absolutely exquisite. I've never <laughs> seen so someone lose their head as badly as Pat Patterson did at that moment. But Van Damme getting crowd surfed up the street. So, uh, yeah, amazing, amazing show. And uh, that was the first time I'd seen The Undertaker live, actually. Um, I've been to quite a few shows before in the UK, but that was the first time I saw Undertaker live. And uh, obviously he wrestled Batista and uh, became the champion in that match. So that was pretty awesome to see that you know and um yeah the Shawn michaels versus john cena main event was was pretty epic as well and um i, I did want Shawn michaels to win that one though so uh some slight disappointment there but uh, i did get my revenge when i went back to wrestlemania 28 in miami which was obviously uh the, what, what did they bill it as one time only yes mm-hmm. yes we all know what happened there but but I'm just I'm classing it as that's what happened. So, <laughs> and obviously, uh, you know that was a, a ma- massive uh, victory for the Rock over John Cena in the main event. Um, the John Cena, uh, no, um, CM Punk versus Chris Jericho match was a bit quiet on that card. I always remember thinking that, but um, that was also the show where Maria Menounos wrestled on, on that one, which was interesting because when I went last year, I was actually sitting next to Maria in the crowd, so I got to speak to her about that. <laughs> So just little interesting bits like that that they link together the other manias you've been to. But uh, so the highlight of that one there was there's two things I'd like to mention to you guys. One was obviously it was at uh, the end of an era Hell in a Cell match between Triple H and Undertaker with Shawn Michaels as the special guest referee, which is just an amazing matchup to to witness and it's you know such a special moment for any wrestling fan. It really was the end of an era, and uh, you know that was amazing to be there. And if you uh, watch it back as they're doing the in-ring introductions, as the Hell in a Cell's coming down, you can actually see me in the corner shaking the Hell in a Cell. <laughs> 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 not that I was into it that much or anything, you know, because uh, you know I'm I'm not that bad. But yeah, so uh, you can actually see me in that one. So that's pretty cool uh, if you know where to look. Also, I was in row five. At- WrestleMania 23, so you can see me for the whole show causing havoc in that one. Just uh, you cause havoc, around the poses in the crowd and stuff, you know, as you do. Um, so uh, yeah, brilliant stuff. But uh, it was just uh, an epic show. The end of an era match was just amazing, and uh, you know, Miami WrestleMania in Miami was great. Um, you know, going to Access and meeting a lot of famous wrestlers. One cool story I'll tell you was um, as you as you went through the Undertaker's. Uh, they had like the graveyard built for the Undertaker at that, and as you went through it, you saw the graveyards of everyone Undertaker had defeated. And uh, when you got to the end of the graveyard, 
Paul Bearer was actually there in the graveyard and you got to meet him and have a photograph with him. <laughs> that is pretty cool. So I just thought that was epic because when my mate went around the corner, he said, oh, there's a great statue of Paul Bearer around here. And I went around the corner and he was like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's class. The oh, that photograph class. of that is just something absolutely special because I've been on the, on the beach for two days in Miami and I'm absolutely tanned up. My mate Pete has been on the beach and fell asleep, and he's absolutely lobstered, like bright red. <laughs> and then you've got in the middle, you've got in the middle Paul Bearer, who is just, you know, full on. He, he, he does look like he's deceased at that time, and he's, you know, pale white. And, you know, the photograph's just hilarious, so it's so good. People think it's not really him in the photo, and it actually, it actually was him there. It was so <laughs> epic to meet him, and, you know, what a character. And, uh, one of a story about about twenty eight as well. I met. Um, I went back to the hotel afterwards. Um, after the Hall of Fame, it was, and there were some great inductions into the Hall of Fame on that one. But um, Yoko Zuna went into the Hall of Fame. Um, I believe Edge went into the Hall of Fame that year actually as well. The Four Horsemen went into the Hall of Fame, which was why we'd initially gone because me and my friends call ourselves the Four Horsemen of the Wirral. Um, and then only two of us ended up going, so uh, that was quite funny. But I did um, meet Mike Tyson, which was interesting. I've just been talking about that because uh, Tate Mayfairs, who uh, wrestles with us on Progress, uh, Mike Tyson is is you know one of his heroes, and he mentioned that the other month in something, and I just said to him, "Oh yeah, I met him in Miami. Couldn't believe his ears." So uh, <laughs> but, uh, I think I do think for, for comedy value, just to let you guys know, the, probably the funniest interaction I had with anyone at that. Uh, WrestleMania was when I went and spoke to the Iron Sheik and I said oh hi Sheik great to meet you you know and I always try and dress quite smart when I go to these events you know if it's Hall of Fame I'm going to put my suit on and try and look smart and he goes are you the waiter? (laughs) 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 I'm just going to do that to you next time I see you are you the waiter? (laughs) So I just got him a drink and pretended I was and said hello to him you know legend (laughs) That's that class. class. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. And then, um, yeah, I've had a, f- a few years off where I've been working hard. I've done, uh, been working for TNT now in Liverpool for 10 years as the ring announcer there. Obviously, uh, worked at Wrestle Island since that started as their ring announcer. So that's been going for eight or nine years now as well. I've handed over the reins of that to Adam Blackburn, who's doing a great job there. And uh, I also uh, obviously work in a progress at the moment and doing uh, wrestle tours. As you mentioned, I, uh, I go on the, t- the trips with them and help look after everybody when they're on the trips now and make sure they're having a great time, which uh, obviously leads us on to the fact that we all went last year to L.A., and it was an amazing trip. We had a great bunch of people. It was the first time Wrestle Tours had ran, so we uh, we only had a slightly smaller group than normal. I think there was about 50 to 60 of us. We had, like, three suites at WrestleMania, and we were all in the suites. We went to uh, we went to SmackDown, we went to Raw, went to the Hall of Fame. Um, we took a few of the Progress wrestlers over with us, but didn't have a show last year. Um, but they all had an amazing time. It was great for the fans to get to interact as well with the wrestlers and stuff and get to see what they're like in person. They are as mad as, as they look in the ring. You know, Charles Crowley, Lana Austin, Rob Drake, people like that, just on a day-to-day basis, uh, uh, not particularly different than they are in the ring, to be honest. Lana will sing karaoke, Lana Roki, whenever she wants, no <laughs> matter if people's people want to hear it or not, you know what I mean? And... Uh, yeah, we had an epic time and we took everyone to WrestleMania. Uh, one cool thing was I had a break for a moment and, and just uh, thought I would go and see where I could get to in the stadium. I, I uh, Just to have a little wander and have a look around. I did end up going uh, to the front row and watching the uh, Rhea Ripley match from the very front of the, of the crowd, which was amazing. But the funny thing was um, earlier in the week we'd met uh, Rhea Ripley's parents, randomly of all things, so me and Laura May, who works on Wrestle Tours, were sitting there saying, "Oh, you know what a long flight we've had." And uh, this little fella behind me goes, "You think their flight was long? We flew eighteen hours from Japan." And I was like, "Oh goodness <laughs> me, yeah, uh, oh, that's a long flight, isn't it?" And he said, "Yeah, we're over here to see our daughter, Demi, wrestling." I was like, "Oh, amazing, Demi, nice, nice." And um, he goes, "Oh, here she is now." And uh, she came down, and it was Rhea Ripley, so we got to meet her and had a chat to her. And then, uh, lo and behold, when I was at WrestleMania, uh, I'm sitting there in, well, I was in row two, 
And her parents came and sat down in row one, like it's all mate from London. So uh watched her win the women's championship with, with her family sitting there right in front of me. So there's some cool photos of that that uh, somewhere. So uh yeah, but we had a great time and uh, we were very lucky that we had so many wrestlers join us in the suites last year uh, to come and watch the sh- watch the shows with us. So we had R V D with us. We obviously had uh, SoCal Val and um, all sorts of people popped in to see us. Uh, CJ Perry, um, as well, Victoria. And um, we had uh, Chavo Guerrero as well. So, uh, yeah, an amazing moment. Chavo was two sweets across from me. And I just glanced across and went, Ooh, Chavo! <laughs> and, he, and he was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, class. Oh, so, uh, yeah, but we have an amazing time. And that, that's the main thing. That's what it's all about, guys, isn't it? Is yeah. going to these, uh, these shows and, and, you know, everyone has a great time. It's a great experience. And, uh, you know... WWE, as, as much as even if you're not a fan of WWE, you, ca- you can't say that they're not putting on an amazing spectacle of WrestleMania. It's always something special. Yeah. You know, the pageantry, the music, the fireworks, the, the wrestling action, it's just absolutely amazing. And it is the pinnacle of sports entertainment. So uh, it's great for like wrestlers who wrestle in the UK to, to get to see that and to see what they can aspire to. And that's what, at the end of the day, I believe most of them are working towards is to get to that stage where they're, you know, on WrestleMania. And to, to get to go to that and to be with the fans and see the fans' reaction is just something so special. And I think um, that's, that's why everyone does what they do to... Uh, you know, to get to experience that and to, uh, you know, to work their way up and be at that stage as well. So, uh, yeah, and there's, there's people wrestling in the UK now, I think, who are, who are going to be at that stage, you know, sooner rather than later. There's some absolutely amazing talent about, and I'm looking forward to uh, going to WrestleMania again in the future and seeing some of the people we've worked with on, on the show. There already are people who we've worked with on the show. You know, I've ring announced for, uh, for Gunfer in Liverpool. He was the TNT champion um, back in 2017. So he's, uh, he's, he's there already. There's, there's all sorts of, on the show. You know, Pete Dunn, who we worked with, who fought Will Ospreay in Liverpool at TNT, who I've ring announced for. You know, it's just great to see. And, uh, you know, all the time I love the guys getting an opportunity as well, even if it's just, you know, helping out at a show. Derice, I know, ended up in a bar fight with Eddie Kingston at uh, AW. You know, it's, uh, it's all happening for them. And, uh, you know, the guys are working hard. So keep up the hard work. And uh, we know the fans who are joining us are going to have an amazing time. So that's uh, that's what it's all about. We've already got a run up the Rocky Steps plan for charity, which uh, Charlie Crovers is going to be doing dressed as Tinky Winky. Tinky so Winky. There's going to be it's going to be very special, and uh, you know there's memories getting made there that are going to last a lifetime. So uh, if you ever want to come and get involved with us and get over to the states, you know, it, it, the options are there for you. I know uh, WrestleMania 41's just gone on sale this week, so. Make sure you get involved. Join us. It's going to be amazing. Nice. Yeah. I, I, it was amazing when I went. And I still keep an eye on it. Obviously, with RR, like, you're always in contact with the Progress guys or and speak about wrestle tours and stuff like that. So I always keep an eye on what's happening. And um, as soon as I've seen that thing for um, Char, for Tinky Winky, I'm just going to call him Tinky Winky because that's what yeah, I called nice. him at FT, though. I was like, Tinky Winky. Um, that's amazing what's happening for him. Um, so... Uh, I can't wait to see the videos of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the card we've got for this WrestleMania, and then I have a question for all of you that none of you know that's going to happen, because even Aaron doesn't know this. Because no, like, I'm not going to lie, I only just thought of it when I was speaking, when my dog was speaking. Love a good surprise. <laughs> yeah, do. Right, so, go on. I'm just going to run from the top to the bottom of what I've got on my phone here for the card. So we have the Bloodline, The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth. Let's pick let's go with who we want to win the matches. Okay. Aaron, you can start. Uh Cody and Seth. But I think Seth's gonna turn. I just Enough. have a feeling he's gonna turn and that's where I'll leave it. Enough. John uh, I think Cody and Seth as well, but I think the rock's gonna turn on Roman. Oh, okay. Mad dog. Yeah, I think they've they've from what they what we experienced last year, they've got to finish the story. I think otherwise they're gonna have a riot on their hands. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent true. We'll see though. Certainly gonna keep people entertained. No, I'm gonna go the bloodline because I think 
as you, Aaron said, I've spoken to Aaron about this in the past. Yes. I've spoken about it. I do think Seth's going to turn on Cody in this match, but I do think something else is going to happen in the other match. So I'm yes. going to go the bloodline. Okay. So we've got Seth versus Drew. Let's go, John. I'm going to say Drew. Fair enough. Mad Dog. I'd like to see Drew pick up a big win. I feel there. Uh... Like, he's worked so hard, and I was gutted when his, his WrestleMania was the one that didn't have any fans, and I think he deserves a really big WrestleMania moment, and I hope this will be it. I'm going to go, Drew. Aaron? Mate, you know where I'm going. I'm going, Drew. I'm all going, Drew. 100%. Logan Paul versus Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens. Mad dog. <sighs> That's going to be just chaos, isn't it? Oh, you know, yeah. uh, out of all the the rest, out of all the people who've come in as like a celebrity and become a wrestler, Logan Paul has been probably the most impressive that, that we've ever seen, and uh, absolutely uh, brilliant sports person. And uh, you know that match is, is bound to be good with those three guys in there. So uh, I, I've just got a feeling uh, they might let KO get a bit of a win at that one. We'll have to see. Fair enough. I'm gonna go. Ooh. I'm gonna see Randy Orton. I would love to see Randy Orton take it. Nice. Aaron. Sorry, mate. I'm going KO. I Enough. just think he's he deserves it. Enough. John. I'm going with KO as well. <laughs> Enough. It's Enough. 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 But, but, Enough. But, Enough. but Everyone turns on us. No, fine. but what I think what I think is going to happen is I think KO will get KO will stun her, uh, Logan, and then it'll, and then he'll do like a turn. And then Orton will arc him, Rand, uh, KO throw Randy out of the ring and then take the pin. That's actually good. That is a good show, show actually. Yes. Right, let's go for brother v brother, J versus Jimmy. I'm going to say J. Sorry, same mate. I'm just jumping in. Yes, yeet, yeet, yeet. Team yeet, team yeet all the way. My dog. It would make too much sense, wouldn't it, for that to happen? Surely they've got to throw a spanner in the works somewhere. I think uh, after seeing Big Quiche uh, at For the Love of Wrestling, I've got a feeling he's going to be involved in some way. You know, he wouldn't, he he didn't say, but I think I wouldn't be surprised if he's uh, if he comes back as sort of a a heel manager there and and costs Team Yeet, and that storyline goes all the way to SummerSlam. It would make sense to see that. He's so proud of those two guys, and uh, I just think it makes sense to uh, to involve Rikishi at this stage. I'd love to see it, and uh, you know it'd be great. But I, I tell you something very interesting was uh, I had a photo from WrestleMania 28 in Miami of uh, Rikishi, and he had the Usos with him at that at the, at the signing table. So it must probably been their first year um, that year. So uh, that was pretty special. And also thinking back to that one that that I didn't mention to you guys was. This show, where what was the Florida promotion called that they had, where they, they run as their um, developmental for a bit? Oh, is that OV? No, that's I was going to say OVW. It might have been F- FTW. Was it FTW or FCW? FCW. Yeah. What are the championship wrestling? Yes. On that okay. on that show, they actually had um, Seth Rollins, uh, Moxley, and um, I think Drew was on it. And I also think that uh, Zack Ryder was was on the show there. Like oh. that was like their, before they debuted on the roster. They were on on that show in in Miami, so that was quite cool to see them before they became the Shield and everything. So yeah, another interesting one there for you. <laughs> nice. Thanks. So the next one, we don't have all the tag teams in this, but so far we've got the Judgment Day versus DIY versus the Awesome Truth versus the New Day versus two more tag teams. I have a theory, and you know this theory. We've spoken Aaron, about this. Aaron's got a theory. This isn't a good idea. No, I do, right? It's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> six back ladder match. And the best way, because I think it needs to be done, it's Judgment Day will win, but one of the other teams will win. But they will both grab a belt. So Judgment Day will keep one belt. And the others will, even if they're on Raw, if it's a Raw team that wins, because there's going to be more Raw teams in SmackDown, that's a way to actually split the belts and have it on both shows again. So there you go. It might not happen, but I just, I've been saying it since they uh, announced this, this. That's the way they're going to go, because both belts are up there. It's going to, I just think that's what's going to happen. John? 
Um, I think, like I say, like Aaron says, uh, I think they're split up the titles. Fair enough. Mad dog. I, well, I'll go off piste and say, I think the uh, after seeing the Hardy boys, uh, Matt and Jeff at Raw this week, I, d- I do think there's potential that they're going to be involved in that matchup. Yeah. I was going to see them. I yeah. was going to see them as a surprise entrant, but... Who and who would you like to see as the other team as surprise entrance? Uh, oh, uh, Rock and Roll Express can still go, guys. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I'd actually like to see the Dudleys as well, to be fair. Well, it is in in Philadelphia, isn't it? So ECW oh, yeah. territory. It would make yeah. absolute sense to have the Dudleys involved. And, uh, yeah, I think that would be pretty pretty special moments, for, uh, especially with Paul Heyman getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. On the first 100%. night, if he brings out the uh, the Dudleys after the Hardys have already entered, that's pretty amazing. You know, that's going to be a special moment for everyone involved. So, uh, yeah, good shout. Yeah. Who's going to win, though, is the is the question. Who's getting yeah. those belts? <laughs> I've got a feeling judgment they're going to keep the titles, but it would be good for them to split them up again as well. Because seeing the both titles and I'm going to bro both brands it's at the stage where like just have a title on each brand like you did it with Roman for long enough now you put the title on both brands put it the same with the tag titles yeah Gunther versus Sammy John I, I, I would like to see Gunther but I think Sammy's going to win it Mad Dog I think Sammy it deserves a moment but I don't know I personally wouldn't have had it against Gunther yet although I think Gunther's ready to be moving towards the top belt, so yeah. it could they could pull the trigger on it at Mania, but uh, it's definitely going to be a great match because Sami Zayn never disappoints. The excitement levels when that guy comes out just go to a whole new level, and Gunther has just been getting better and better and better to the point now where I think he's just, you know, he was absolutely amazing when I saw him at, at, you know, when he wrestled at TNT. In this very building I'm in, he was the TNT champion. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, he is uh, just... Brilliant athlete. I think I'd still like to see Gunther retain on this occasion, but Sammy have a really great showing. So, mm-hmm. uh, I want to see Gunther retain. To be fair, um, so yeah, I'm going to I think there's fun. going to be a twist. I think they're going to. I think Chad Gable's going to get inserted in some way. No, it's, that's actually a good show. He deserves to. He's been He's absolutely nice. brilliant, and it was him. Yeah. I, I feel like the fans were behind him getting that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, to the point where even they sort of booed Sammy, didn't they? A little bit. Yes. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Uh, you know, you never thought that would happen. But uh, you know, Gable has been just an amazing athlete for years now. I remember when we saw him uh, back in Blackpool for the NXT tour, uh, when the whole crowd for the whole show in the Empress Ballroom were just chatting, Gable, Gable, Gable. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant, man. Class. Aaron, who are you going for that match? Um, I am going uh, Gunther. Right, oh, he's going I'm Gunther. This. I am. I'm going the yeah, yeah, yeah. but I do think there is going to be a twist somewhere. Just with what we're seeing with Gable backstage, if he's not going to insert, he's going to try and help Sammy or coach Sammy in a way yeah. to potentially yeah. get him to Sammy to win. Even though I think Gunther will take. Fair enough. Rear Ripley versus Becky Lynch. Mad dog. Um, Storyline wise, it makes sense for Becky to win the belt after Rhea's had it for a year, but uh, I personally would like Rhea to retain. I just think that would be uh, brilliant as well. But uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll have to see. I, I want Rhea to retain. Um, as much as I do like Becky Lynch, I would rather Rhea keep the title just now, so I'm going to go Rhea. Aaron. I'm also going to re I just think uh, she's had it for the full year. She's built up so well to make her lose it at many would be silly. Fair enough. John? Best deal in the business, Rio. Fair enough. Nice. EO, EO Sky versus Bailey. I'm going Bailey. Same. Right. Bailey, mate, 100%. Yeah, it yep. makes sense after the story they told at the Royal Rumble. Makes yep. sense for that to be the case. And uh, yeah, well deserved. I think she's going to. I think she's going to bring her Bailey or Bailey Bailey buddies. Bailey buddies be back, yeah. Yeah. Right, last one. Roman Reigns versus Cody. Aaron. Cody fucking Rhodes. John. Cody Rhodes with a rock heel turn. Eh, Not a heel turn, a face turn even. (laughs) Mad dog. 
Finish the story. You've got to finish the story. <laughs> Enough. I'm going Cody because my point of the, from the first one is Rock turns on Roman. Because what got pointed out to me, which I never noticed before and I've started to notice, is when Rock does the one, yeah, he does an L. it's an L. And it's yeah. always pointing to Roman. Yep, yep, yep. That, so, yep, yep. That's my that's what I was told and that's my theory. Right. To get this done quickly, the question, right? Oh fish. Obviously we have FT every year. We've not mm. long had it this year. I've met numerous people through it. Right. You have three people you you would want to be there to meet. Your three main people. Oh right, sorry mate, I'll go first. Go on then. I'll, I'll go first. Triple H. Right. Stone Cold. Right. And oh, fish and chips. Uh, <laughs> oh, taker. Don't you can't have that. Sorry. Taker. Fair enough. Takers. There we go. Fair enough, John. Jeff Hardy, all time right. greatest, uh, all time favorite wrestler. R Truth to thank you for following me back on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rick Flair. Nice. Woo! Mad dog. I've been so lucky to, you know, work in wrestling and to be at for love of wrestling for quite a few years, to be at WrestleMania. Uh, I, I've sort of met everybody I ever wanted to meet in wrestling. The only person I've not ever ran into at anything is uh, probably Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's probably the only one I've not actually, like, had a chat to. And uh, also Hulk Hogan. I've not Hulk Hogan has been at, not been at any of the sort of events that I've been to in the past. So I mean, I know he sort of has a bit of a bad reputation with certain fan bases at the moment, but uh, you know, back in the day in the eighties, he was an absolute legend, and uh, you know, I feel like the industry wouldn't be where it is if it wasn't for the Hulkster. So I think that'll be cool. And then uh, I always enjoy chatting to Brett the Hitman Hart. So uh, you know, that'll be quite a cool one for me if, if to chat to the Hitman again. He's always uh, absolutely very polite, very friendly, and. Uh, has some amazing stories to chat to. So, and uh, you know, you never know who might show up when you go on with wrestle tours. You just never know who's going to show you up there. Know. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. And uh, there's always, always surprises when you go to WrestleMania. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to. Uh, I'd just like to give a shout out to everyone who's joining us this year, and um, looking forward to seeing you in Philly. By the time this drops, will we? Will we be in Philly? You possibly will Super be in Philly. Be, yes. There you go. Well, I'm looking That's forward fine. to watching this back. We just as have well. to get a mad dog back on to speak about Philly. Yeah, Guys, 100%. I'm happy to dive on live while I'm there. You know, if you need if you need me to dive on while I'm in Philly, more than welcome. I'll get yeah, the uh, Wrestle Tours crew on the yes. show with me and you can chat to some oh, of our That would be awesome. Yeah. That would be class. That would be a but, show. Yeah. I just want to say yeah, as well, thank you so much for having me on today, guys. You've all no, been no brilliant to chat to. Thank you for sharing you know, your ex wrestling expertise and your experiences and uh, just keep spreading the good word of, uh, of wrestling about because uh, the more people speaking positively about it, the more uh, fans we have at the shows and the more the excitement builds for things like this. And uh, yeah, obviously you're always all welcome to join us with Wrestle Tours when we're heading over to the States in the future. And who knows where else we might be going in the next year or two. Nice. That's a wee, that's a wee trouble. So my three... Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about oh, that. Oh, yeah, sorry, cut you off. <laughs> Undertaker. <laughs> I knew Taker was going to be one. Edge. Yep, called that in my head. And I'm between two. So I'm also between Stone Cold. Actually, nice. I'm between three. Stone Cold, Triple H, but I would also love to meet the Miz. Now, that would be a good shout to meet the Miz, actually. That would be a good shout. Cause oh, so, for my last one, I really kind of pick it. guys in, at WrestleMania, when I was... When I was sneaking to the, the floor, I saw the Miz and Maurice and spoke to them just ever so briefly as I wandered through, which was nice. And nice. Uh, a really random one for you, just before we go. I, I met the Liver King at WrestleMania last year. Oh, nice. If you're familiar with who that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Follow him on Snapchat. I was like, I saw him as I was taking a, I was taking a selfie of myself. And I, I, in the reverse of the selfie, I just saw this guy with no top on walking behind me and i was like <laughs> i just said who on air for you and he just goes i'm the liver king and i said well <laughs> i'm the mad dog <laughs> it's a real conversation anybody anybody oh, witnessing really that would have thought we were just a pair of absolute lunatics i had me full-on like a uh, leopard print suit on 
and he had no top on with a cigar indoors at <laughs> WrestleMania. It's just surreal. But yeah, oh yeah, Craig. I also have a theory about the tag team uh, tag team ladder match as well. I think our truth might pick up one and say, "There you go, Judgment Day. You've won the titles again." Get confused again. That is, that is our truth. So there's probably uh, that I, happen. I just love him, honestly. I absolutely love him, and how he's getting to run the way he's getting to run again is just awesome. Yeah. Well, well done with getting him involved for sure. A hundred percent. Oh, guys, one person that you really need to meet, by the way, who's an absolute legend, is uh, Scotty Too Hotty as well. Ma'am. 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 He came to the local show up for us, and yes. we got to meet him. Yeah, That's was... amazing. He's just such a great guy. And out of all the like wrestlers from like the Attitude Era, he, he, he you know, him and Rob Van Dam can still go. They're, you know, I'd happily watch them wrestle still now all the time. Brilliant guys. And... Uh, yeah, absolute honour to, to get to work with those guys. Brilliant. Nice. Yeah. So, thank you very much to Mad Dog, John and Aaron for joining on this one. I know, Aaron, it's me and you that does them anyway, but thank yeah, you. Yeah, anyway. no, it's fine. Um, so, the stories have been great. Love the stories from everyone. So, thank you for listening to this uh, when it comes out in the next couple of weeks, probably. Guys, so, as well, if you're in Philly, make sure you come to uh, Progress. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, Friday. we've also got Defy on the Thursday, so uh, try and get involved. And there's so many events running while we're in Philly. You know, get involved with as much as you can if you're over there. You know, the WrestleCon is amazing. The GCW Collective, all that sort of style of things going on is great. And uh, of course, the Mania Party is just amazing as well. The Tailgate Party, mm-hmm. uh, just get involved with as much as you can. Have a great time. It's uh, you're making memories for life, so just enjoy yourself. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Go and speak to Mad Dog. Go and speak to Lee. Go and speak to the Progress Stars. We've got so far. There's been many announced. Lana is there. Rob's there. Gene Money's there. Session Moth Martinez there. You've even got Sanity going. Sanity. Yeah. They're going yeah. to be there. Going to be class. You've got. Bussy gonna be there. I I love Bussy. Can't get. Yeah. I, I I just love watching Bussy. <laughs> <laughs> that seems not wrong, right in my head when I say that, but it does not. I know you. The for the for the show, won't it? When it goes out. <laughs> yeah. And I hear Shayna Baszler's performing in Bloodsport as well. With Josh Barnett. Yes. And Bloodsport. Yeah, really interesting. I'm surprised to see that, but yeah, that's great news. Yeah, I think it's um. Things like that happening are really good for the business as well. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing that as well. Yeah. But, uh, Joe Henry is doing well running um, Discovery as well just now, Joe Henry. Yes. yes. Yeah. He is. Always, always enjoy working with Joe. He's, uh, some of his uh, songs that he's done in the past, there was one at North he did about Shreddy that was just masterful. <laughs> Love it. There was one, there was one where he'd done, uh, he done one about... Um, Matt Cardona and um, uh, oh, what the hell's the other boy? Can't remember the other ones, but uh, they were, he called them Edge's bitch. <laughs> oh, Kurt Hopkins. Kurt yes. Yeah, I remember Brian that. Brian Myers, Brian Myers, that's the one. That's Brian the one. Myers. He was known as Kurt Hopkins. That's a... Yeah, I know. I know, mate. Right. So thank you very much, guys, for coming on. And that's I hope nice. you enjoy listening to the stories when you listen to this back. And just remember... Keep it real on the Real Wrestling Podcast. Peace. Peace. Thanks for having me, gang. Thanks so much. I keep it real. You already know the deal. Keeping it real, hold